I started this yesterday, but I couldn't finish it for a reason I won't get into, because if you know me, then you know why. The quality of this looks amazing. It's just a bit weird that uh, Sony is doing better CGI than Disney. In terms of both acting and goriness, this seems to be on the level of Deadpool. Obviously nowhere near as funny as Deadpool, but, you know, it's... Nothing's perfect. Uh, also, that bit where, like, especially where Venom chops all their heads off in a row, like, it's a fucking machina execution, is just, like, Jesus Christ. And it made me think, like, imagine if we had an 18 rate of Venom. But the thing about this also kind of reminds me of the warehouse scene from Batman v Superman, which is great because that was a really good fight scene. Say what you will about uh, Ben Affleck's Batman, but you know, that was a really good scene. This bit right here where they're sort of, I guess, fighting over saying we are Venom, it's it's a little shit. More, more than a little. We're over a minute in so far, this is just him wandering around aimlessly. In some tropical place, and honestly, if that's all this film was, I would enjoy it. Like, I, I feel like that would be good. I do like the use of uh, Space Oddity here, it just doesn't feel right for some reason. So, this right here confirms that the film should take place in the MCU. But that doesn't make sense because the way that the Far From Home, or sorry, No Way Home post credit was was that Eddie was temporarily brought to the MCU and then he, he left, he got sent back because of how No Way Home went because of the plot. So, you know, this scene takes place in the MCU but Eddie is still in the Sonyverse so either they're gonna go back and forth which I doubt or they've just made a mistake which it's the Sonyverse. Like, I love the Venom films, but they don't have the best reputation. There's also the fact that they cast the guy that plays Mordo as this character, which I didn't have a problem with him doing that if this took place in the Venomverse, because, I'm sorry, <laughs> the Sonyverse. Uh, because, you know, multiverse, that's how it works, but I find it a bit stupid that we have I can't pronounce the guy's name, but the guy plays Mordo as both Mordo and this guy in the MCU. And I know that, like, Gemma Chan played two different characters in the MCU, but it, I just. <laughs> anytime I see, like, for example, if an actor joins, say, FBI, even though they already played a different role in Law and Order, which the two of them are connected, it, it pisses me off. Um, I, I don't like the fact that uh, the film in this seems to be someone who isn't a symbiote user. I get that it makes sense, you know, we can't have all the villains be symbiote users, but I'm just thinking about how in the Flash show, um, it was at its worst when there was a non-speedster as the villain. Like, season four, uh, well, I actually quite enjoyed season five. Season 6B, Season 7 especially, I get Godspeed was there, but Season 8 especially, and actually all of Season 9 was Speedsters. I'm going to get a lot of hate for comparing Venom to The Flash, but fucking do something about it. When I saw this the first time, I audibly laughed out loud. It's great, and I love the way that they're just... Even though... it It's not that it doesn't make sense, but this... It's a little forced, but I, I still... It's tolerable, because it's just... We love Mrs. K. I think I saw Stephen Graham there, not sure. And... Uh, but the guy with the hair and the beard... I... Honestly, he looks like Matthew McConaughey. Apparently, it's Reese Siphons. So, 
even if they don't do any sort of lizard thing with it. Excited to see what's going on. So that comment I made about there being no symbiotes in this, other than Venom. Never mind. Although it does seem to be a, uh, a sort of Godspeed thing where it's like, they're only a threat. Excuse my stomach. They're only a threat in a group. Like, if it was just one person, then Venom would rip them to shreds, but because there's so many that it's a challenge. Fucking Venom horse. I can't wait. A couple of mates said that they, they didn't enjoy the trailer, that there's something felt wrong about it, but this feels so right, other than the confusion about what universe it takes place in. I don't get how this can take place on E-Day, when, as far as I know, the COG are, and it's like, God, didn't exist until after E-Day, because it's not like they had knowledge that something was going to happen. Oh, sorry, I think Marcus's dad knew. And he tried to warn people, but they didn't believe him. But just, you know. If you want to make a prequel that takes place, like, just after E-Day, fine. But something that takes place on E-Day? Maybe it, maybe it does take place in, like... Is that my PlayStation controller? Uh, maybe it does take place, like, a week or a month or however long after E-Day. But the fact that it's called E-Day makes it sound like it takes place on E-Day, which just doesn't make sense. I don't remember if they explain what happened. They they land up Marcus in prison and the start of the first game. But I really hope that this doesn't sh or that this doesn't show up because I feel like it's best off left up to the the player. You know, is <clears throat> is Marcus kind of a a dick or a bad guy or is he? Actually innocent. I didn't think we'd be getting another Life is Strange because I thought that because Tree Colors I don't think it was really received well. I thought we're just not gonna get another one. And also just the fact that with the exception of Before the Storm, which is more like a spin-off than a direct sequel, especially since you know the next game was called Life is Strange 2. Um I feel like the they've kind of fucked themselves over because, you know, people want Max as the protagonist in Life is Strange or there's something to do with them, that sort of group of characters from the first game and Before the Storm. But, one, because of the way the, the Life is Strange worked, the first game, it is almost impossible. And two... Because they've already established that basically every game would follow a new group of characters that they're all loosely connected. The fact that they, they're returning to it seems a bit strange. No pun intended. But it is great to see Max back again, especially since I had no idea this was coming. But it's just a bit shit that um, this has been overshadowed by other things. I get the fact that um, she's grown up. Uh... Let me guess. Uh, let me... First game takes place in 2015. Following the way that they normally do these. This takes place in 2022. So it's been nine years since uh, the first game. If they're doing the same thing that did all the other, other games. Because the way it worked was that you know first game released 2015. Took place 2013. The second game came out 2018, took place 2016. Third game came out 2021, took place 2019. So, assuming this comes out this year and it takes place in 2022. Um, so, I get that she's grown up nine years, but it just doesn't look like Max to me. I don't really remember Max's voice, but it also just doesn't sound like Max. Also, I like the way that all oh, the supernatural murder mask, yeah, that sounds... So good. Another thing is that the way that, you know, it ended, unless Max just suddenly develops a new set of powers, or they're just going to change her character so that she just doesn't give a fuck, or she's like, oh, 
you know what, I, I care about this person so much that I'm just going to risk creating a, another storm and use my powers to solve their murder. Because, you know, the way that the first game worked was that any time she used her powers it would lead to the build of a, of a storm uh, because of chaos theory. So, either way, you, whatever ending you get, either you kill Chloe or you just let the town, you know, crumble. Like, Max, either way, I mean, it would make sense for her to just never use her powers again. So, I feel like that's another way that they kind of fuck themselves over. I don't get what they're saying here. So, it seems to be that her powers have evolved instead of outright changed. Um, and she's saying that Instead of going back in time, she's able to just go into parallel universes. But the way that this is presented and all the things that Max is saying in the voiceover makes it sound like it's going to be exactly the same as just using her powers to go back in time. So this, I'm just going to call it multiverse bullshit. And it's, when I say multiverse bullshit, you know what is bullshit because I don't like talking shit about the multiverse. Um, they, they shouldn't have done that. <clears throat> I get that this isn't actual gameplay footage, but just the way that this looks does not look good. Uh, the lip syncing, especially, isn't the best. Yeah, uh, October. I also don't like the fact that this seems to say that it's going to be an Xbox and PC exclusive. What the fuck's going on? Because it's not like Square Enix or Deck 9 are don't nod are like second party companies to Xbox or Microsoft. Like they were never bought out. It's not like plus I mean you know Xbox bought out Activision and yet they're still gonna release COD on PlayStation. So why? I mean I own an Xbox, I just don't want to play it because it's my brother's and he's a very disgusting person. And I'd rather not catch diseases. So just what is the reason for you releasing this game exclusively on well I guess not exclusive because it's also on the PC, but just why is it not on PlayStation? Like I, I want an actual reason and not just some bullshit thing like oh we came to an agreement because it makes no sense for you to come to an agreement unless Microsoft is shipped you like hundreds of millions. Okay, thank fuck. Uh, I was looking at the the trailer on the Xbox uh, YouTube channel, and I get that you know Xbox and PlayStation are sort of rivals by default, but um, I don't get why the Xbox version of the trailer didn't say that it's coming out on PS Five. I'm actually going to look at the, to see if I can, I'm not going to pre-order it right now because I have the money for it, i just rather not spend it until I get paid next, which is probably in about 20 days, maybe 18. There's something about the fact that, oh I forgot to mention, um, it's currently not on the PlayStation Store. It's not in the pre-order section, it's not in the wishlist section. <coughs> Uh, all the way, the, them guys wearing, like, a, a fur coat, there's just something about it that's so cool that he is doing it. This looks like it's gonna be better than Eternal, which I don't know how to do that, because Eternal was so good. I don't know how I feel about the flying bit at the end, but then... The last thing I have to say about it is that... See if you want a laugh. Wait until gameplay. Uh, like... Wait until reviewers get access to it for, like, gameplay purposes, watch IGN trying to play it, because they, if you look at their, like, gameplay of Doom 2016, they do not know what a video game is. Like, that. that's how bad they are. They were at it. 